Hey guys and welcome back to my channel. Today I have a really fun tutorial for you. This one is for a quilted textbook cover and you can make this for any kind of textbook you have. We're going to be doing um, a composition notebook, but you can make it for your school books or for a journal or whatever. It's really cute. It's a fun, easy, quick project. So if you want to see how to make this, let's take a closer look. Okay, so the supplies for this project are fairly simple. Um, you'll need some kind of notebook, of course, to work from, and we're just going to make um, these using a, um, a composition notebook. It's kind of a standard size, and they're kind of bleh on the outside, so we're going to pretty it up. Um, you'll also need a flexible measuring tape so that we can measure our book. You'll need some scrap fabric, and this is a great time to use any kind of strips or leftover kind of trimmings that you have, um, and you can kind of just pick colors that go to coordinate or your favorite colors or whatever. You'll also need some fabric um, for your backing, and I'm just going to use this plain white because nobody's really going to see it, so I usually pick like a cheaper kind of um, backing fabric. And then you're also going to need some batting, and this is just a nice thin, um, um, this one is actually a cotton batting, but you can kind of use whatever you can find, whatever's cheapest. Uh, it's just to kind of give your, um, your cover just a little bit of a a heavier um, kind of padded feel to it and I'll put measurements for all of this below for this particular book. For your own book you'll have to kind of measure your notebook. Um, and then you'll also need these little hair ties and I like to use these little skinny ones. They're super kind of flexible and they are not strong enough to hold my daughter's hair so um, we just use save these for crafts. You'll also need a button. Um, a rotary trimmer, some scissors, and then some kind of a ruler and a cutting mat. And then of course you'll also need your sewing machine and you don't need any special sewing um, foot for this project. We're just going to use a regular quarter of an inch um, foot or whatever foot came on your sewing machine. So um, that's it for supplies. So let's get started on the process. All right, one other thing I forgot to mention that you're going to need is some spray basting. And I like the 505. I have tried Joann's brand and some other cheaper brands before, and they just don't stick as well for me. And so this brand I've really never had any problems with, and it doesn't, like, gum up my machine or anything. Um, so... Um, you do want to use this in a well-ventilated area, so if you um, are, you know, a younger person doing this tutorial, make sure that you have your parent help you with this step in the process. Okay, so the first step is to um, measure your notebook. So like I said, we were going to use a composition notebook, but you can use whatever you want. Um, and you're just going to measure it top to bottom, so it's about nine and three quarters of an inch. And then I'm going to actually add an extra inch to that just to give myself some wiggle room as far as, you know, maybe I didn't sew straight or cut straight or whatever. So we're going to put it at about, um, let's just say, ten and three quarters inches. And then you're also going to measure all the way around your book, and you want to leave it closed like this. So just go to the end, flip it, and to the back, and it's about 15 inches, so I'm actually going to make sure that my fabric is 16 inches. All right, and you're going to want to make sure that your backing fabric then, and your batting fabric, and whatever you um, quilt for your top side is all 15 or I mean, I'm sorry, 11 by 15 inches. That'll give you plenty of room to um, trim it all square when you're all done. So um, one thing I want to point out is you do not want to open your book this way and measure it, um, just because um, a lot of times it'll be slightly smaller depending on how thick your book is. And so you'll end up with your, um, this is actually pretty close because it's not very thick, but you'll end up with your fabric um, top being way too small. So just on the safe side, leave your book closed and measure around it. So now that we have our measurements, we can kind of set that aside. And then the next thing we need to do is just pick out our fabric. And I just picked out some strips that I thought kind of went together. And I just set them out in order. And I don't even know how thin or thick these are. Um, I went ahead and just kind of made sure that I felt like I had enough strips to give me my 11 inches. And keeping in mind that you're going to lose a half an inch here um, at each seam. So you don't have to be super precise with this. You can just start going and measure and go and measure. And I'm going to show you how to do it. We're going to kind of quilt it as we go. Um, but you can um, just add strips until you get the desired length to match your notebook. All right, so the next thing you're going to want to do is trim your backing fabric and your batting fabric to the size of your book. So again, mine was 11 inches tall um, by 15 inches wide. And I've just kind of folded that over to keep it tidy. So we're going to set both of those aside. 
And then because I like to do all my trimming at the beginning, that way once I start sewing, I don't have to stop to like cut a whole bunch of stuff. We're also gonna trim our little side flaps that are gonna hold our um, book, um, book cover onto our book. So you're gonna need again another um, two pieces of fabric that are the same height as your book. So that's 11 inches high. This time we're gonna cut them eight inches across. And you can use either the grids on your cutting board or I actually have another one that is a little bit wider. So I'm just gonna grab that just to make it easier. I have two pieces of fabric layered here. And I'm just going to line up the line right on the edge of my fabric, as you can see, and then just trim it off. All right, so those are our flaps. And what we're gonna actually do with those is fold them in half and I'm gonna run a stitch right down the front of these just to kind of make it look a little bit more finished. And then you'll see we're gonna set those aside and then we'll add them to our finished product when we're done. All right, so these are my little book um, flaps and I'm just gonna hit them with an iron really quick so that I can um, just get that seam and then I'm gonna take them over to my machine and just run a quick stitch right down about a quarter of an inch in just to give it a more finished look. All right, so here we are at my machine and I am just going to um, I'm going to use a white um, string, but if you or thread, if you want, you can use um, a color just to make it kind of accented. If your machine has fancy stitches, this might be a good time to do that as well. Um, I'm just going to be kind of boring here since it's going to be on the inside side of my book and just do a quick stitch about a quarter of an inch in. And as you can see, I'm lighting my fabric up right here with the quarter on um, the edge of my foot. This is a quarter inch foot. So we're just going to run that down. And I'm not even going to cut it, I'm just going to stick in this next one. And there we go. Now we'll just put these apart and just put them to the side and then we're going to get started on our top. Okay, so the next step is to add your backing to your batting because like I said, we're going to actually quilt this as we go just to make it a little bit easier. So I've added some paper towels to my um, cutting mat just so that I don't get any sticky stuff on there. Normally I would take this outside, but since we're filming, we're going to do it inside. Shake your 505 up a little bit and then just do a nice light spray. Make sure to kind of get the corners. Set that aside and then with your right side facing up and your wrong side facing down, um, this is a solid so kind of doesn't really matter, um, you're going to carefully um, lay your fabric onto your backing and this is kind of repositionable so if you mess up you can peel it up and, and push it back down. And you're just going to want to give it a nice firm press and you can tell because if you go to pick it up your backing, your batting will come up with it. If you see that it's like loose right there in the corner, you can always add just a little spray to take care of that. And I think we're good to go on that part. All right, so let's head over to the sewing machine and start putting on our front. Okay, so I have all of my strips in my lap in the order that I want them sewed on. And I'm just gonna start by placing the first strip and just lining it up against the um, edge of my batting here. And I'm just going to do a straight stitch. Again, if you wanted to do something a little more fun, you're welcome to. You can also use different color thread again as well. And these I'm going to um, do about every half inch or so. This is actually going to be the quilting, which is going to make our top look quilt. I'm just going to do straight lines all the way down. And you don't really need a special foot for this or anything. If you find that it's slipping, you could use a um, walking foot. But I found that small projects like this are fine to be like that. When you come to the end, um, make sure if you have a needle down position, you can do that. If not, you can just crank it down using the um, knob on your machine. But make sure your needle is down. Lift up your presser foot, just twist it, put it back down, and just travel across about, I don't know, half an inch. I'm just eyeballing this so it doesn't have to be perfect. And then we're going to go back down the other side. And now I'm just watching this stitch line on my foot and just trying to... Um, keep them about the same distance apart. If you have lines on your fabric, you can kind of use that as a guide as well. And again, we're at the end, so I'm going to lift my foot. Travel. And then come back down the other side.
Okay, now for this one, I'm actually gonna cut it so I can show you how we're gonna add on our next one. And I'm gonna turn it around because I work better that direction, but you can do whatever is easiest for you. The next thing we're gonna do is our lay our next strip right sides down on top and make sure that it comes to the end down here. I'm gonna pull it off a little bit because I have a, um, I have a, the, the um, salvage sticking out right there but I just want to at least make sure I make it to my end. And you're just going to line up your strips. Just make sure that the edges are touching so that when you sew this on, you don't, you know, accidentally miss it. And then we're just going to come up here to the top. And this one I'm just going to actually sew, use my quarter inch marker again. And kind of like I'm piecing these together, I'm just going to go ahead and sew a quarter of an inch together like putting the pieces together, I just happen to be also having the batting in the back. And this is kind of a quilt as you go method, like I said. So it makes it really easy, because when you're done with your sewing, you're actually done with your project. All right, so if you like, you can take this over to the iron and press it just a little bit so you have a better crease right here. And I think I am gonna go ahead and do that. So let's head over to my iron. Okay, so I'm just gonna hit this really quickly with my iron. I'm not gonna worry about the stuff that's hanging over um, on the edge. That's really all it takes. Okay, so we're back at my machine and if you'll notice I have it turned this way so that I can use this line as kind of a visual guide and I'm just gonna try and keep it about the same distance apart. As you can see, these aren't perfect. If you like, you one of these little quilting measures. It sticks right back here in the back of your foot and then you can just use this to go down the seam to make sure that you're um, getting a standard distance. I am not that picky about these and I think it's a lot easier or fun just to kind of go for it. So we're going to do the same thing we did on the blue strip on the green strip now. Alright, so I'm going to do the same thing and line up the my right sides together and just make sure that my strip, the salvage is kind of coming off the end down there and then just making sure that my edges are lined up for me. And then I'm going to go down this another quarter of an inch and then I'm going to continue adding my pieces that way. And you'll notice I have these sitting here, I'm not going to worry about those, we'll just trim them off when we're done. So here is our finished quilted piece. So here's the quilting kind of up close. You can see my lines aren't perfectly straight, but with the patterns and all that, I don't think it's gonna matter a whole lot. And then if you flip it over, you can see that the um, quilting is also on the back side. So we're actually done with our front and our back all at the same time. All right, so our next step is going to be to trim this so that it's our um, correct size for our book. Um, one thing I wanted to mention quickly, when you're trimming your pieces, you're going to want to make sure to leave about a quarter of an inch on both sides from what your book measured. So this book was 10 inches, so this is actually going to be cut at 10 and a half now. That's why I gave myself 11 inches, just so I had some wiggle room. And then the same way, going horizontally, you're going to want to leave an extra quarter of an inch on both edges. All right. I had you lay aside the um, little flaps for the cover. So we're gonna flip our project um, with the pretty side down and the back side facing up. And you're just going to place your flaps on the edges and just line up the raw edges with the raw edge of your project. And then that way you have the one that we sewed for a finished look on the inside. And then your book cover will slide into these little pockets. Now, um, just to give myself a little bit extra space, just in case I did make these a little bit larger. So I'm not gonna really measure. I'm just gonna set this on here line it up with my um, quilted piece, and then just slice off any extra. And then this is kind of ready to go. What I am gonna do at this point is just pin these edges down just a little bit, just in a couple of places, so that they don't move around on me when I go to add on my binding, which is our next step.
Okay, all right, so let's set this aside and now we're going to work on our binding. Okay, so our next step is to prepare our binding. Um, and I will have another tutorial on how to do this without binding it. Um, but for this one, we're gonna do a binding because I thought it would be cute. Um, so you're gonna need two strips of cut at two and a half inches of width of fabric. And width of fabric just means from salvage to salvage. So just how it comes off the bolt. And then just to make it a little bit easier to trim, I'm actually going to fold it in half one more time. And I'm going to just line up one edge so that I know that I have a straight edge to work with. And I'm gonna do that by lining up the bottom line of my ruler with the bottom line of the fabric here. Make sure I kind of have all four pieces there and then just trim it off. So I know I have a straight edge to work with now. And then carefully I'm going to turn this back upside down because I am right handed and this is how I cut. And if you'll notice I'm not actually using the grids on my, um, my mat, I'm using the ones on my ruler. Now as I mentioned before the Creative Grids ruler has whole numbers and then if you flip it over these black ones are the half numbers. And so this is two and a half and I'm going to just line up this two and a half line with the edge of my fabric. I'm also going to kind of line up this bottom one too so that I know that I will have a relatively straight cut here and I'm going to cut two pieces Oops. All right. I'm going to cut two pieces at two and a half inches wide and that should be enough binding to go all the way around our quilt so now the next step is to just come over and attach our binding to each other so that we have a full 60 inch strip. If you're not working with a full, um, a full like with the fabric strip, you basically need a 60 inch by two and a half inch long strip of fabric. So however you want to put that together, um, you know, go for it. You can, you can actually do this as a scrappy binding and put together a bunch of little strips, whatever works for you. The next thing you're gonna do is put these two right sides together. Whoops, <laughs> right sides together. <laughs> And then we're going to bring it over to our sewing machine and just sew a, um, sew a quarter of an inch, just straight stitch. Um, this is not a bias binding, but for little projects like this, I don't feel like that's necessary. Um, this works just as well. So we're just going to um, sew a quarter of an inch down that edge. Okay, so we're at our machine and we're just using a regular straight stitch and sewing a quarter of an inch to attach these strips. All right, so the first thing that I do whenever I'm preparing binding is I um, just come and get any seams that I have for my binding strips and I just press them open. So I just do that really quickly just because it kind of saves me from doing it, especially if I'm going through a huge long binding strip. You can also kind of do it as you go, but whatever works for you. The next thing that we're gonna do is we're going to fold our bindings wrong sides together so that we have a about a one, and a quarter inch strip and we're just going to crease that and just keep going all the way down our strip of binding. Okay, so we're back over at our book cover and we've um, pinned our little inside flaps on. And the next thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna add our binding. And now I'm gonna do this kind of backwards from how I normally do my quilt bindings. Normally I sew this onto the front of my quilt and then flip it and um, add it to the back. But because we're gonna be adding a little elastic to um, secure our book today, we're gonna do it backwards. So we're actually gonna sew the binding on lining up um, the rough side or the raw edges to the raw edges of our um, book cover and then we're going to stitch all the way around the binding and then I will show you how to join it. Okay, so we're over at our machine. I've given myself a couple of inches of extra over here and I've lined up my raw edges of my binding with the bottom and the raw edges of my book cover and I'm just going to start it about halfway. This is so that you won't see um, the join. It's not like a huge deal. Um, but it's just how I like to do it. And then we're gonna take a couple, like a locking stitch. If your machine has a locking stitch on it, you can go ahead and set that now. And you're just going to do a quarter of an inch all the way around on the binding. And you're also making sure that you're catching your pockets and that's why we have the pins in here and we'll just remove those as we get to them. Now, when you get to about a quarter of an inch away, you're going to do a lock stitch. My machine has one for me. 
All right, so we backstitched and trimmed our thread right here about a quarter of an inch from the end. I'm gonna hit this first corner now. Um, if you don't know how to do a mitered corner, it's very, very easy. You just take your fabric and flip it over to the side so that it's in a straight line with your project right here. See how that's in a straight line? And then you kind of hold it and then flip it back this way and just press it down like that. And now you have a little mitered corner and you'll see when we flip it over. And then you're just gonna continue on stitching right there. So, I'm going to do that one more time just cause I let go of it. But as you can see, I've got my straight edge right here. I'm gonna pull my fabric up straight so that it's in line and then flip it back down. And then we're going to keep stitching. Now on this one, we've got this other, our end is coming up. So I just want to stop a little bit um, away to give myself some room. I usually like about mm, a minimum of like four or five inches. So I'm actually not gonna go too far down on this. I'm just gonna do a back stitch right there. Trim it. Okay, so for my quilts, I usually do a mitered um, binding, but for small projects like this, I'm just gonna do a straight quarter inch um, join, so it's a lot easier. So the first thing that I'm gonna do is just grab my scissors, and about halfway between where I stopped and here, I'm just gonna kinda cut off a straight piece. And then I'm going to take this piece and lay it on top, the small piece and lay it on top, and just pull it nice and secure, and then I'm gonna mark one quarter of an inch from where this smaller piece stopped. And I'm gonna kinda of just clip that with my scissors and then check it with a ruler just to make sure I'm doing a f actual quarter of an inch right there. So I think that's pretty good. And then I'm gonna just line it up with that little snip and cut off the extra. That wasn't super straight, but it'll be okay. And then we're gonna take this to the machine and since we have a smaller project like this, it, it can be kind of tricky, but you're going to pull it out right sides out, pull this one out right sides out, and lay them together and then just stitch down the edge with a quarter of an inch seam. And since this is a small little opening here, it's easier if you um, fold over your project, that gives you a little bit more room to work with. All right, so we're back over at our machine, and I actually picked out a few of those stitches because I was uh, just almost a little bit too short um, to make this work. So um, now we're just going to do a quick quarter of an inch uh, stitch down these edges and just kind of line them up. And go for it. And just trim that off. And now you'll see that it should line up and you shouldn't have any buckling or gaps or anything like that um, you know in between your stitches it should be nice and snug if it's too if it's got a gap or whatever um, I would cut it and just do it again or you can even stitch just slightly closer and then pick those stitches or whatever um, if it's too tight it's probably okay because you can kind of uh, just you know stretch the material a little bit and kind of coerce it into um, lying flat on your project so now we're just going to finish stitching this down and I usually will just finger press at this point um, this seam open just because trying to get this over to the ironing board and whatnot can be kind of a hassle. So just press it open with your fingers, line it back up on your machine, and then finish stitching all the way to the end. flat surface and we didn't have any buckling or anything like that and that's what you want all right so at this point your project should be looking like this and I just went ahead and trimmed off any excess um, threads and that kind of thing next thing that we're going to do is flip it over and then we are going to stitch our binding on the other side you can hand sew this if you like but um, since this is a smaller project I'm just going to stitch it on 
And we're also going to add our little elastic to the other side. Now this one's purple, so I think I'm gonna go find a different color one so that it matches a little bit better. But basically all you're gonna do is pick the side that is going to be the back side. And I have decided that this one looks a little bit nicer, so I'm going to fold it in half this way. This is gonna be my front. So this side is gonna be my back, and I'm gonna just find the middle of it and put my elastic right here and then I'm going to take it over to my sewing machine and stitch um, just a couple of stitches just to secure my elastic on and then when we go around and add our binding um, it will just further secure our elastic in and then when we're um, all done doing that we're going to add our button and we'll be done. So we're back over at the machine and I found a green um, tie that I like a little bit better so I'm just going to take this over I had it pinned on here just to kind of just hold it but I'm going to take this over here and just hand put down my needle it kind of holds it for me and then I'm just gonna run a stitch or two along this just to kind of secure my elastic and you want to kind of squeeze it together so it's sort of touching on the end right there and just take it slow I'm just going forward and backward over it just to kind of secure it and then I'm gonna just do another little back stitch and cut it that way it's not going to go anywhere and then you can just trim off this extra piece right here and then when we fold our binding over it'll stitch it um, and hold it down even better all right so to stitch on our binding um, I am just using my regular foot here and I'm actually going to run this little piece along the edge of this just so that I get like a really close stitch along the edge of my binding and um, since I'm going to do a back stitch and I don't want it showing up too much I'm actually going to start on the bottom of my book and um, that's the top sorry hang on and you're just gonna fold it over and place your foot down and then we're gonna just run a quick straight stitch and you can um, always I'm just using white thread but you can always match your top thread to your binding which I might have suggested doing before I think for this project it'll be okay. Now when you get down here to your first corner, um, I usually try and see which side has the bulk on the back and you can see that it's folded on this side. So this side actually has more fabric on it. So I'm going to do the fold on the opposite side on the back just to kind of control the bunching or the, the thickness of my fabric. And so all you do is kind of pull it out just like when you were adding it on, pull it in the opposite direction like that and then fold it over like that and then you will have a mitered corner and you can kind of just adjust it you can pin these if you like if that helps I've done enough of these that I'm just going to hold it with my finger you just want to keep a close eye and just as soon as you get right to the edge of this folding you'll leave your needle down lift up your foot straighten out this side put your needle back down and just keep on going I'm not going to worry about the back side of this because it's going to be inside the book and you're really not going to see it. it's not going to be a big deal. And once you hit this, you're going to want to slow down when you get to your elastic. And you're just going to repeat that all the way around. And we're just going to do a little back stitch and trim off any extra threads. And we're done. All right, so here we are. Your project should basically be looking like this now. You've got your elastic um, coming out of the side there. You've got it all nice and binded. And if you flip it over, you can see your pockets for your notebook to fall, um, slide into. And then the last thing that you're gonna need to do is just fold it over and bring that elastic around the front or just out so you can see it out the side. And then you're just going to hand stitch on your button wherever it makes sense on your project. So we'll do that next and then you're done with your project. All right, so hopefully most of you know how to sew a button on, but just in case you don't, I just found some coordinating thread and I just 
put it through my needle, doubled it up, and then I came down here and I'm just tying um, a couple of knots on top of each other just to kind of make it so that it's thick enough it won't pull back through. Hopefully you can kind of see that. And then I'm going to just trim off his tail so it's not too long. And now for this project, because I don't want um, this to be in the way of my pocket, I'm actually going to pull my pocket out of the way so that I'm just sewing through the um, the quilt top. And you could always do this beforehand. It's just really hard um, if you um, are sewing on your binding to get around a button like that. So I pulled it through so you can't see it. And then I'm going to go ahead and add my button. And then I'm just going to carefully continue to stitch on my button. Um, being careful not to go through my little pocket back here. And hopefully you can see that, but... And I just go in one hole, out the other, and just continue um, you know, in like a zigzag pattern, like out this hole, in this hole, out this hole, in this hole. And you just want to continue doing that until you feel like your button, um, button is on nice and secure. And then you can come in the back back here and tie off a knot, and then you'll be all done. All right, so I finished securing my button, and this is your finished product. The last thing to do is just put your book on, and as you'll see, um, the elastic just goes nicely around the button, and then you can open it up, slide your book in or out. You can even kind of use these as pockets if you have some paper you need to stick in there or whatever. Um, and also the other thing to keep in mind is if you don't have a button or an elastic or you just don't want to bother with it, that part of the project is really kind of optional. Um, this will stay on. You don't have to tie it, or you could add ribbon or whatever. You can make this your own and just be creative, decorate it however you want. All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed that tutorial. If you have any questions, feel free to email me. And I also will have all of the measurements and instructions for the composition notebook below and also in my blog post. So if you decide to make one of these, um, please tag me on Instagram. Uh, my username is Erica Arndt. And you can also tag me on Facebook or um, Twitter or any of my social media outlets. I would love to see what you make. And I hope you enjoy this project, and we'll see you next time.